All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks for listening in today. Uh, my name is Patrick Miller. I'm a fourth year medical student at Washington State University, currently doing a spine rotation here at the Swedish Neuroscience Institute. Today, I'm going to do a brief review of uh, Propionobacterium, which these days is being called Cutibacterium species. Specifically, I'll focus a little bit on their importance in spine surgery. So the bacterium itself, it's a gram-positive rod. It's an anaerobe. It's a normal component of the skin uh, microbiome, uh, typically of fairly low virulence. It uh, makes its home primarily in regions of skin with high um, sebaceous gland density. It's a, a slow grower, and as is the case for a lot of slow-growing anaerobes, it can be pretty difficult to culture. Uh, the most common species of clinical significance is uh, Cutibacterium acnes. The clinical relevance of these bacteria, uh, although most often they're not virulent, uh, they can cause serious infections, uh, particularly in association with surgical hardware. They do form biofilms. Um, the most common uh, surgical hardware to be infected by these species are uh, shoulder implants, uh, primarily due to their uh, proximity to uh, the axilla with a high sebaceous gland density. Um, there is actually some evidence that uh, irrigation with copious amounts of water in poorly uh, prepped skin during surgery can flush these bacteria into the uh, incision. And uh, often these infections are kind of smoldering and indolent and may present months to even years in some cases after surgery. In spine surgery, uh, these bacteria have been known to cause osteomyelitis, osteomyelitis or spondylodiscitis uh, following uh, um, hardware implantation. And an important component of this is that cultures are often negative in a patient who may appear clinically pretty ill. Uh, these are more likely to be slow growing in the case of spine surgery as well. Uh, they're less likely than other more virulent bacteria to cause epidural abscess. Uh, and interestingly, uh, specifically in uh, spine surgery, uh, spine surgical infectious complications, these bacteria are much more common in men and specifically middle-aged men. So how does this present and how do you diagnose it? Uh, well. The uh, typical signs and symptoms of infection may be absent with cutibacteria. So specifically, there may not be a whole lot of pain. There may not be fever, redness. Um, often, the patient may just present with joint stiffness. Uh, and it may be found simply on radiologic studies showing loosening of screws and hardware. Uh, so I would suspect this type of an infection in patients with uh, subtle chronic symptoms, loosening of hardware, potentially with negative blood cultures if those are obtained. Um, be sure if a sample is obtained during a reoperation uh, that it's cultured for anaerobes. Uh, treatment is with antibiotic therapy. Uh, this should be tailored to culture and sensitivity if available. Uh, most often, these are sensitive to penicillin, cephalosporins, clindamycin, and if uh, there's a uh, serious infection, um, carbapenems. Uh, make sure that you're picking an antibiotic with uh, good CSF penetration and uh, tailor to local susceptibility patterns whenever possible. Um, surgical washout with removal of hardware, if it's practical, um, is also important, again, due to the, the biofilm formation. Uh, this is a, slight, is a related topic uh, of great import and recent development. So uh, these species of bacteria have been implicated as a potential cause of chronic disc degeneration. Uh, there have been a number of studies that have essentially cultured discs in patients who have been taken uh, for a variety of herniation surgeries. And these have grown out propionobacteria uh, in as, in some cases, as many as 50% of those discs, leading to the uh, hypothesis that chronic uh, biofilms uh, in the intervertebral discs is a con contributing factor to chronic disc degeneration. This is a subclinical infection. Um, one proposed hypothesis for why this occurs is that some of the uh, bacterial enzymes actually activate the NF-kappa B system. Uh, leading to increased inflammation. 
But this is actually an area uh, of, um, that is very emergent. And so a lot more research is needed specifically to demonstrate a causative relationship and then to explore whether or not uh, there can be uh, a treatment that's effective for this.